Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Korlick with Figure It Out Productions. The following video is part of our quick shoot series. Hey guys, got a box here. Uh, I got this from a friend of mine named Daniel. Uh, also, he also goes by the name Tyler. Uh, this is something he has owed me for quite some time now, uh, but he hasn't been able to send to me because uh, he's in the military and uh, he only gets so much time at home and uh, he finally got a break and sent it to me. So that was cool of him. So you already know what it is because you looked at the title. So we're just going to go ahead and open it up and we'll see what this thing looks like. Uh, I'm pretty excited about this. I'll rip that off there. And then, well, might have to use some... Nope, I think we can go without scissors. Go here, real quick. Alright, open that up. Yes, okay. We got a lot of bubble wrap, good job. And we can see... Well, there you go, it's a Super Famicom box. Let me get this big cardboard box out of here. Alright, there's nothing else in the box apparently, which is totally okay. But yeah, check it out guys, it is a Super Famicom box. Um, now the Super Famicom itself is in unbelievably, unbelievably bad shape. Uh, let me go ahead and take this out of here. It's just in pieces all over the place. And then of course here's the system, which uh, has some serious yellowing on it, at least on the lid, but that's okay. Uh, there's the bottom of the box. No controllers, that's no big deal. Any of that, move that box out of the way. That'll be part of my collection later. Now, as you can see, this is just in horrible, horrible, terrible shape. But, uh, and I'm sure you're thinking, Adam, how the hell are you going to restore that? Well, um, it's not going to be easy, I'll tell you that one right now. In fact, uh, well, most of these parts, we're not even going to use them. But uh, first, let me explain why he, well, why it looks like this. Um, so the Super Famicom, for those who don't know, is the Japanese equivalent of the Super Nintendo. Um, they got a completely different design of the system, and uh, that's cool. But the cartridges also look different. The chipsets inside of a Super Famicom game and inside of an American Super Nintendo game are identical. So uh, basically, if you can fit a Super Nintendo game inside this system, it would work. Or if you can fit a Super Famicom game into an American system, it'll also work. This does not apply to European stuff. That's on a whole different thing. That Those won't work on either one. But, um, so what he did when he was younger, apparently, is he decided to cut the, uh, the frame so that his Super Nintendo cartridges would fit in the system, which was, sorry man, but that was a really horrible idea, as we can see. But, um, yeah, we're not, we're not out of ideas here. Uh, actually, if you guys remember, quite some time ago, and I mean, this is a while ago, uh, I got a package from my friend Raymond, who lives in the UK, and he, in addition to all the things he sent me, he sent me something else. A Super Famicom lid. Yeah. I think you can see where I'm going with this. We're going to, um, first of all, we're going to take this lid off, this horrible, beat-up, terrible lid, and we're going to replace it with this much, much, much better lid. But we'll also clean up the system as best we can, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, that way, if you do have a Super Famicom, you can clean it up and get it as nice as possible. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is flip the system over, and on the bottom, you'll see there's uh, six screw points. Now, thankfully, on this system, as bad as it is overall, the bottom is nowhere near as, well, frankly, as disgusting and dirty as the top, so once we switch it out, it should look a hell of a lot better. But, uh, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to take a screwdriver. Now, this is called a game bit. This is a security bit Nintendo put into the Super Famicom, as well as the Super Nintendo, the N64, the GameCube. Uh, you need this to open these systems up. Uh, unfortunately, this is not even a remotely standard type of screw. You have to buy this online. You can't go into a hardware store. A lot of people tell me there's like a solution where you can take a pen and kind of mold it in there and then use that. Pretend this is our lid. comes off. Now, again, bottom of the thing is really, really dusty, really, really gross. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to strip all this down and get to the plastic and try to clean that up as much as possible. Now, I'm going to show you how to strip this thing down, but I'm not going to bother cleaning it because I cleaned it already when I got it, and I know it's perfectly fine. But, um, yeah, I might as well just show you that process here real quick. Uh, my screwdriver here. Okay, so your lid. Uh, basically, you just got to take this apart. There's one screw right here holding up this little plastic washer. And go ahead and just remove that real fast here. And once you get that out, and you get this little arm piece. Let me get this out of here. Take that out. 
Uh, then you just start pushing little pieces out. Go ahead and push down on those. Get that out. Hang on. All right. Push in on the sides of the plastic there on these gray things. I think that's actually the most efficient way to go. Yeah, it's been a while since I cleaned this lid up. And that should basically pop it up through the other side. And there we go. Big piece comes out. And then all the other little pieces basically just kind of come out with it. So, there you go. That takes off our lid there. And uh, the most the piece you got to be most careful of is this little plastic piece right there that's right above the light, the LED, because that could get lost very easily. So, there you go. Uh, that's how you take this apart. Now, of course, if it was dirty, I would say run it under water, rinse it up, clean it up. Same with all those little pieces. Onto the system itself here. Uh, it's very, very dirty. It's very, very disgusting. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have to take it apart to get to the plastic. I don't always do this, but in this case, I'm definitely going to. So the easiest place to start with here is the cartridge, or sorry, the controller ports. Just kind of take those and um, gently disconnect the ribbon there so you get the board pieces out of there. Um, now, you can also clean up this plastic piece, so we're going to do that. So what you do is kind of thread this through here, like this. Okay, and then there's a couple of plastic clips underneath, right there, right there, on both sides. Just kind of push in on those a little bit, and this top piece will just kind of come off. Now this, get out of the way. That's electrical. You don't want to try and clean that with water. But this, just like the other plastic pieces, I can take soap and water and clean this up and try to get it as nice looking as possible. But over here, back to the system, uh, we'll keep taking parts out. What we're going to do is we're going to find all the screw points. Now there's one here, one here, here, here on the soundboard, other side of the soundboard, silver, 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 and then of course the two by the power switch. So what you got to do is remove all those. Now, of course, in advance, remember that there's two silver ones here that are probably going to be slightly longer. It's just a guess. And uh, other two silver back there. They might be longer. They might be the same size. I really don't know. But uh, just remember where those come from. Okay, so once you have all the screws out that I mentioned, there's going to be possibly two surprise ones. Underneath this switch right here, there's another one. It's another little brass one. comes out very easily. Now, if this is anything like the Super Nintendo, that means the early models had this little isolated sound box right here. Um, I don't have a later Super Famicom, so I'm not sure about this. But uh, it's possible there's other ones that don't have this little box. This box comes, box comes off like this. This was just isolated to do all the sound work. Um, there's a, if you have that, there's going to be another screw right there underneath. Um, and there's possibly there one right around that area on the other version, assuming there is another version. So just be aware of that. But anyway, once you get those screws out and, of course, remove the sound box, you should be able to just lift the board. Oh, wait, sorry. One more thing. <laughs> uh, the uh, cartridge eject mechanism. you got to get that out. Very simple. Lift up this little thing. Pull up pull that out, you get the plastic piece, you get this little metal piece, and you get this other metal piece. Um, if your plastic piece here is dirty, you can clean this up. If it's not, then don't bother. Uh, now we should be able to lift up the board. There it goes. comes out very easily. I'm going to put this off to the side. Uh, underneath, it looks like we have more RF shielding. Take that up and out. And then we're down to mostly the board. There's a couple of little metal pieces here for some reason probably to help it, uh, the motherboard screw into the plastic better. Get those out of there. And then underneath, we have a little uh, plastic expansion port cover. So now that you're down to this piece, uh, you can wash this up as best as possible. Okay, I've gone ahead and cleaned this up. Uh, it actually wasn't that dusty. The motherboard is incredibly dusty, but the plastic wasn't so bad. Um, so there's a little bit more we can do to this. Uh, this case has a couple of scuff marks, like that's the most noticeable one right there. There's a little black mark there. Your case possibly has more. Um, for this kind of thing, if soap and water won't get it out, the only thing I find that works is uh, Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser. It's uh, basically just like a little white, um, sand, really fine sandpaper with a little bit of bleach in it. And all you do is kind of take it and just rub against the, um, the little mark in question and basically just annihilate it into oblivion. <laughs> and, uh, well, there you go. It's completely gone. Uh, now, of course, it leaves a little bit of dust everywhere, so I'm going to have to wash that off, but since it's just plastic, that's no big deal. Be careful when you use that stuff, though, because uh, it will take logos off, it'll take stickers off. Wash it up again, cut the dust out of there, so that's looking better. I'll just put that off to the side to dry, and of course, the same with this RF shield. 
Now we can go ahead and grab our board here. Now, um, upon further inspection, I realize that this piece of RF shielding can come off as well, so I'm going to clean that up too. Same method. Uh, but the rest of the board, you can't use, obviously, you know, water or anything on it, so you have to kind of be a little bit more creative. And uh, what we're going to do here, the most obvious thing you can do, is use um, some compressed air. Now, this is pretty simple, basic concept. You just kind of spray it everywhere and just dust comes out. So I'll go ahead and do that right here. Okay, well, that'll be a little bit difficult. I have to put the straw back in. I hate this can. Right, hang on one second. Okay. I gotta stop buying these ones with the crappy white thing on it. Okay. You guys see that? There was a ton of dust that came out of that thing. So much so that I probably should have had a vacuum nearby. Ugh. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll probably clean some more up in there. cold. Um, but anyway, okay, so I got a ton of dust out of there, which is awesome. Um, now, uh, what else, what I can do now is I'll probably take, let's see, let me grab, I will get a Q-tip, just a dry Q-tip, and just kind of gently rub it over the mechanics of this thing, the board, and just try to get out whatever dust is just kind of on the surface that uh, won't come out from the compressed air, because the, the less dust you have on there, the better, you know, it just improves the odds the thing will work. Um, actually, it looks like the compressed air got a lot of it. There's not much coming off anymore, so that's really, really good. I'll do one little quick run right over the cartridge slot. Didn't really do anything. Um, so the next move is to clean the actual cartridge slot. Now, what I do for this, typically, is I take um, a cartridge cleaning kit right here, and uh, all you do is you take these little plastic pieces, you find the one that's most appropriate, in this case, it's going to be this one. And because it's a very special situation, because it's a Super Nintendo slash Super Famicom, we need a little one, which I'll explain in a moment. Um, yeah, you're going to need these two things. If you don't have this, and I'm betting you don't because they're not super common anymore, uh, what you can do is something called a credit card method. You take a credit card or like any kind of plastic card like that and wrap it in felt cloth and then do this, which what I do is I take the cartridge cleaning kit and I take Windex, also known as Window Lean in certain parts of the world. It is an ammonia-based glass cleaner. It's fantastic for this stuff. And Windex, if you're watching, please send me a check. I have made you so much money, it is ridiculous. But anyway, spray some on like this. And rub it on one side. And then rub it on the other. And then just stick it in the cartridge slot. And go up and down a few times. Like that. And that should really wake up the cartridge slot and get a lot of dust out of it. Let's see how much comes off. Pretty significant amount. Okay, So I'm going to keep doing that with this. Now the reason I have this little one is I have to do this on the sides, right here and right here. See the Super Famicom and the Super Nintendo have extra chips that are extra pins on the side and here on both sides for uh, extra features in certain games, most famously the um, Super FX chip for Mode 7 and other things. Games like Star Fox used it. Not a whole lot of games use those two sides, but they do exist and you can clean them. And I'm going to clean them uh, basically the exact same way. Just spray some on there real quick. One side, wipe it on the other, go up and down a few times. And, wow, gross. So I'm going to keep doing that a few more times to make sure I get it as clean as possible. But after you do that, if you still have your compressed air, compressed air nearby, you're going to want to spray some and just get excess moisture out of there. Okay, so the only other thing I can think to do on this thing, uh, unless you have very specific dirt anywhere on the back, which this one does not, uh, you could clean up uh, the contacts on the uh, video output board and uh, so on in there. Probably get in there with a little Q-tip. In fact, I'll just go ahead and do that real fast. This is a dry Q-tip. Stick it in there. A bunch of dust comes out, so that's great. Um, but uh, there's not really a whole lot else to do other than just kind of do some spot cleans. Cleaning in there, cleaning up there. You get it. Uh, the other thing we can do is clean up the contacts for the controller board, but there isn't a whole... it's kind of hard to get to that, so the only thing I can really think to do is use some compressed air. And that's about it. Okay, so all the plastic is dry and uh, now it's time to put the system back together. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is grab that tiny little RF shield piece and put that back into place just like that and we'll move this out of the way <clears throat> and we have to get our bottom piece of plastic here. Now you'll remember there's those two little pieces you need to insert those one right there and one 
right here if I can do it. Yes, I can. There we go. All right, then you take the bottom RF shield piece and just fit that into place like that. And then you take the whole board, and there you go. It goes in very, very simply. Uh, now, of course, we have all our screws, and we have to put those back into place. Now, you'll have a bunch of those brass ones, and you'll have four silver ones, okay? So the two, two of the silver ones go in the cartridge slot right there and right there. Then there's two other silver ones that go uh, back here, sorry, right there, and right there. So uh, the, all the brass ones go into the other places, including underneath there, uh, underneath there where the soundboard is, and then of course once you put the soundboard back into place, like this, assuming your version of the uh, Famicom, Super Famicom has it, you'll have to put another screw there and right there. Don't forget, of course, there's two screws that are holding the uh, power switch together, so make sure to put those in place. Um, now, there's a couple of screw points that might screw you up, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, there's one right there above the cartridge slot, and there's, again, another one on the other side, and there's like a couple down there, uh, right there, and right there. Ignore those, okay? Don't put anything in those four points. Uh, or don't put anything right there, don't put anything right there, just put them in the places you found them originally. Um, so, I'm assuming you've done that, let's move on to the next part here, which is the, um, the uh, controller ports. So first we're going to take that uh, piece of plastic we took off earlier, and we're going to put that back into place. And I believe that goes on, just like this. Uh, you just kind of, nope, other way, sorry. Other direction. Okay, there's only one way it can go on, so you won't be able to screw that up like I did. Um, but anyway, once it's back on, uh, take the little ribbon part here and kind of thread it through like that. Um, you know, there's some dust on here, so I'm just going to wipe that off with my finger. But anyway, I've threaded it through just like that, and then you just kind of feed it into that and just sit it in. It's very, very simple. Uh, so that part's good to go. Then we have to take our, uh, this part is kind of a pain in the ass, so bear with me. Um, you take your little plastic piece here, you take your little spring, and you take this metal rod. Uh, what you have to do is get it back, obviously, where it was. Uh, I find that the easiest way to do this is to take the rod first, put it through the plastic piece, get it through the other side like that, and then what you have to do is, I believe you take the short end, well no, okay, on this, that's the Super Nintendo I'm thinking of. On this side they seem to be equal, so just take one side, mash it up like this, and then kind of pull back a little bit, get some of that out of there, and you have to line it up, I'll try to do this as best I can here, you have to kind of, there's like a hole down there that you have to match it up with, and then there's another hole on the top that you have to match the bar up with, and if I can get it in there, hang on, this is, like I said, this is a pain in the ass, unfortunately. Come on, we can do this. Right in there. Okay, got it in. Good. And then, just for added security, push that down a bit. And uh, that'll pretty much do it for the bottom of the system. So now it's time to put the uh, lid back together. Now again, I obviously swapped out that bad lid with an extra good one that I had. Uh, so get all the little pieces here. Um, hang on a second. Bring them all together here. And the first thing that we're going to do is put uh, that little, tiny little piece of plastic, put that back in there first, uh, which goes in, should, yeah, just falls right into place. Um, and then we take this thing, like this, and line it up. It's got little holes, so it should hold together very nicely. Reset button, put that back in. Eject button, put that in. Uh, and this part's a little difficult, the, um, the, the spring load tray. You have to kind of push the spring back, and there's like a little plastic wedge back there that will kind of hold it. Actually, I take that back. We're going to do that part last. Um, take this piece, put that in just like that, and what we're going to do is in, instead of going from the back, we'll go from the front like this, and then we can use our finger right there, and just kind of push on all these points and just pop the thing back into place and that should pretty much do it that looks doesn't look perfect why doesn't it look perfect okay there we go and uh, it's back together all right except for the one part back here we have to take assuming your super famicom has this not all of them are going to um, pop this in here like that line it up and then take 
the little washer and take your screwdriver, line that up, and then, of course, tighten that back into place. Just like that. Okay. And now you've got your top and your bottom. And, of course, your bottom has the little expansion bay thing. So uh, make sure to put that back in, like that. And then we take our lid, and uh, I advise that you keep that switch down because we're going to line this up and have this down as well. And then we put the top on, like that. And then, of course, finally, you got to take your six screws, your uh, game bits, and uh, put them all back into place. It is now put back together, and it looks pretty good. Uh, not perfect. Uh, we can clean it up in a few ways. Although, obviously, the majority of what uh, made it look better was the fact that the case was replaced. But on a normal, you know, Super Famicom or PAL Super Nintendo, just cleaning it would probably do the trick. You wouldn't have to go through the same level of trouble. So uh, what we're going to do to try and make it look even better is we're going to take a pledge and uh, we're just going to spray some on a paper towel like that and then just kind of wipe it down like this and uh, it just kind of gives it like a nice shiny coat uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and uh, let it dry. Now of course you want to do this on all sides and on the bottom as well. Alright, we've let it dry and uh, it looks better. It doesn't look like amazingly better, but you know, doing that will also get extra dirt you might have missed, like out of cracks and stuff like that. So it's always good to do that. Uh, it tends to work better on um, dark consoles, you know, but on a white or gray console like this, it doesn't really tend to reflect as well. So uh, it's, you know, the pledge, that's up to you. I think it actually really helps. And of course, it makes it more dust resistant. Now, the final step here uh, is a little tricky one and a unique one. Uh, this is, of course, this is obviously the Super Famicom we've been cleaning up this whole time, but this is one I've already got. Now you can see it's much grayer, it's, it's much more normal color. Um, the problem with this one is that it's turning yellow. And the reason for that uh, is uh, bromine. Uh, Nintendo put bromine in the plastic in a lot of these things, to pr this and the Super Nintendo as well, to prevent them from catching fire. Um, which I can't imagine was a common problem. But uh, unfortunately, over time, it's had the effect of basically wearing the plastic down, turning it yellow, making it very brittle, and this can be fixed. Uh, I've done a video on this already, uh, on removing the yellow from a Super Nintendo. If you're curious, watch that video to do this. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do is go ahead and do that process and then show you the end result. But uh, first, I'll just kind of give you another quick look at, you know, you can see the, the difference in the color there and on the back. You know, it, it's just in need of a good retro brighting. It looks substantially improved. You can kind of see the original color on that part still, as that part um, is part of the board, and therefore it's not really a good idea to put retro bright on it. But uh, around the plastic, you can actually see it improved substantially, although the bottom piece still is not as good as the top piece. So eventually I will probably do that again when I can justify it with enough more yellow plastic to do that. But uh, for now, why don't I go ahead and hook this up, and we'll find out after all of this if it actually works, and it better work. I've got the console all set up here, and uh, as you can see, it looks pretty good. Now, I don't own any Super Famicom games, so I'm using Super Nintendo games with a Super Famicom adapter. Uh, now, there's no, I think I mentioned this before, but uh, the only thing that's stopping them from working is just the shape of the cartridge slot, so that's why you get an adapter like this. Uh, so let's pop it in, see if it works. Uh, before I do that, first I want you to know that I'm using a SCART to HDMI adapter for the video. Uh, I did a whole video on this. Uh, I highly recommend you go and check that out. It's the way to get the best possible video quality out of the Super Nintendo, Super Famicom, or any other horde of systems. Also, I don't have a power supply for it. Interestingly, you can use a Sega Genesis Model 1 power supply on the Super Famicom. You can actually not use a Super Nintendo power supply as it does not fit. So, just so you know. Now let's turn it on and see if it works. Power is up. On the screen... Yep. There we go. Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City. I, of course, I live in Chicago, so, you know, Michael Jordan's kind of a big deal here. So, uh, yeah, looks great. Seems to be working just fine, just awesome. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and turn it off now. Uh, so I just want to say thank you to Daniel for finally getting this to me, and uh, thank you to you guys for watching, and um, I'll see you all later.